You hear that, so Sherry? That's the key right there. Because yes, he plainly said he plainly says it. Number one, he says that you, uh, in uh, Corinthians, he says you've been washed, you've been sanctified. See, in the Old Testament, in Leviticus, that they love to point out the dietary laws. The first thing he says is, is uh, the purpose of these laws is for I am the Lord your God. Concentrate yourself. Therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. You shall not defile yourself with swarming things and crawl on air, for I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land. Therefore, therefore, be holy, for I am holy. Well, we yes. know that this never happened. But yes. in the New Testament, when Peter applies this very verse, mm -hmm. he says, as it is written, and watch what he does in Peter. He says, uh, let's see, therefore, preparing your minds notice he points to the mind for action and be sober-minded set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of jesus christ as obedient children do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance but as he who called you is holy you also be holy in the old testament you had to do stuff to be holy you had to not eat certain things you couldn't do certain things you had to bathe you had to wash your hands and all of this but in the new testament you're holy because he made you holy yes yes sir yes sir yes sir teach brother brian <laughs> come on sir help yourself <laughs> oh my god Yes, sir. And such were some of you, but you were washed. You were sanctified. Sanctified means set apart. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. Yep. You hear that? It says you were, you were justified. You were sanctified. That's past tense, right? Yes, so, sir. Uh, what the Hebrew is like, the first thing I ever remember from a Hebrew is like they told me that, you know, we're set apart people. We're set apart for our, because what we do. Well, this text says that they're sanctified by the Lord Jesus Christ and not by their works. Come on. So that kills the whole Hebrew is like doctrine that you sanctify, you set your own self apart. That's right. That's right. That part. <laughs> they saying that part, Brother Brian. The chat, you got them going. Listen. <laughs> but it's true. But it's, I, listen, family, if we reflect back on the Old Testament and we look, listen, they had the law, right? Again, as I pointed out, when we were dealing with uh, Inspiring Philosophy, uh, IP's uh, uh, video, Brother Inspiring Philosophy's video, he was dealing with Luke chapter 16. With the rich, uh, with the rich, uh, uh, rich man, and what Lazarus, both were under the law, but one ended up in hell. Now wait a minute, I pointed out to y'all nine times out of ten, the the rich man had the means to do everything that the law required. L Lazarus who didn't have a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of it because he was a poor man, he ended up in heaven. how that end up happening? how that end up happening? Now, hold on. <laughs> if the rich young... You want to know rich, how? Come with it. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, okay. beginning with the, with the 28th through the 30th verse. And the 30th verse is the main text, but we can't stop with it since with but... <laughs> All right, you said First Corinthians chapter one verse thirty, or you want me to go with verse twenty-eight? Yes. It says here, God chose what is low and despised in the well, world. Well, I told you about snow reading too doggone fast. Uh, stop it, uh, the uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Slow that down. I like to, but you beating on them drums a little too hard, a little too fast right now. Slow that. Okay, God now you can go. What is go low on. and despised in the world? Hold it. Was Lazarus low and despised? Yes, he was. In the world? 
Okay. Yes, he was. He, but God, the Bible says what? God did what? Even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are. Uh -huh. So that no human being might boast in the presence of God. Hmm. And verse 30. Why? And, and because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. I dig it all. See, the, one, uh, the, the King James Prince says that as justification. Justification and sanctification and redemption. Wisdom from God. Justification and sanctification and redemption. Uh, all you guys who think because you could keep the law, the Ezra said keep no law, but he, the, 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 the Bible says what in verse 20? Go back to 28. What did he say he was? God chose what is low and despised in the world. What is low and despised. Ain't nothing more people hate more than someone who is really poor and out there homeless. You know, you got a few folks who help out. You can go to a shelter every now and then, but well, for the most part, they got the scavenge for everything they get. But God chose. That's why. That's why. Because the he had the dude had his reward. He couldn't. He couldn't hear the word. He didn't want. You remember? He didn't want to bother to even hear the word. Mm. Until he got nailed, then he was ready to hear. Too late then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Too much, much, much too late then. And that ain't no pair of what actually happened. <laughs> so, uh. 31 yeah. says, So that it is written. Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. In the who? Boast in the Lord. Not, 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 not no law? No, boast in the Lord. Not knowing you an Israelite? No. And then, wait a minute. And not knowing that you... you, you you chose you God. I'm to God's chosen people. No, that's not what you know I said. Ain't what they say. You get to boast in the who? Boast in the Lord. That being Yahweh. Yes. That being Elohim. Yes. That being Kurios. Yes. Uh, that being Theos. I didn't cover every language, y'all. Yes. <laughs> You got it in Greek and in Hebrew. I mean the same thing. You both in the Lord. Now, hold on. Well, Dr. Michael Brown says something very interesting. And uh -huh. I wish I went and looked it up. I'll probably just go and do it in front of you. I got you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> cray, cray. <laughs> Brother Brown, please don't start with me. <laughs> Listen. Put your feet up, Brother Brian. Put them up. Put put them crocs and Dr. put your Dr. feet. Dr. Michael Brown said something very interesting in his statement. He kept saying, he said, counterfeit grace. What in the world is counterfeit grace? Now, counterfeit grace, it says here, is this accusation of using grace of God as a license to sin is brought against professing Christians like Brent and by attempting to oppose that they think it uh, is an abuse of grace. Well-meaning Christians form a new and equally destructive gospel, one which no more preaches grace than the gospel of Brent. That's interesting. So I, 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 he kept bringing that up. The 
counterfeit grace and uh, true grace. Now I, I get this in, and let me see. I don't know which way to go. Cause these, these, all of these look good. Um, so you, I, I guess, you know what, daughter? I, Mm-hmm. Would you remember what Jesus said to the church in Ephesus in Revelation 2 about them Nicolaitans? Yes. That was the start of counterfeit grace. Mm. So yeah. it, it's, it's and, says- rem- and remember the, the Catholic the Roman Catholic Church sold indulgences so that the Crusaders could rape and pillage villages. Yes. So that is also counterfeit grace, but you had to pay for it. You had to pay the church so you could sin. (laughs) Tell the truth. Yeah, because he kept mentioning, and I'm like, I, I never heard it put that way. Um, regarding counterfeit grace. Um, and, and I figure I just, you know, I, I would just go and look it up. Usually I have it already prepared, but he kind of caught me off guard when he said that, Pastor Sean and Brother Brian, regarding counterfeit grace. And so I, I you know, I, I figure I, why not just look it up in front of you? Um, uh, and uh, let's, let's see uh, a little bit of what well, I brought up one. Take a choice. Yeah, there you go. Bring it up. It's so let's... many. It's so many of them, and, and and they all look good. But I'll choose this one. And it says here, and now the pro, uh, blah, 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 pro, proactive uh, a title has you here. Let me explain. God's grace is beautiful and perfect. Our grace is a cheap knockoff of the original. Did he just say that? Let me, that, that now let me blow this up because I don't want folks to. <laughs> That I'm adding nothing to this article. I don't want y'all. I'm going to blow it up to 150. Y'all should be able to see that. So it says right here, Brother Brian and Pastor Sean, our grace is a cheap knockoff of the original. And until we take on the ingest of the true article, we cannot know the all-consuming, life-changing, beautiful design of God's perfect gift. So how do we find this grace when so many counterfeit graces exist? Well, let's start where we all must realize our darkness. Until we realize how dark our shadows really are, until we realize how broken and disgustingly destructive our rebellion and sin really is, we can never know to the full extent, the beauty of the sa- of the, of a saving and loving grace that Jesus offers us so freely. So often, instead of staring our darkness in the face and calling it what it is, we justify, explain, and excuse our ours and other sin. Sound familiar? Saying there room, there's room for this or that. It's not that bad. It's just what culture does. Mm, it's okay. Then we uh, we are confronted with our sin. We say grace is all I need. Wipe our hands clean and carry on with business as usual. But in doing this, we are not actually living in the grace we claim we are. Instead, in doing this, we abuse and contaminate and make light of the gift if grace that was given to us not to excuse our bad behavior, but instead empower us to change. Jesus came and died to bring a new kingdom to earth, a kingdom that is here to redeem, remake, but also kingdom that is here to destroy the painful destruction power of sin and the brokenness we allow it to, uh, to take us, um, I'm sorry, to allow it to have uh, have over us. I think in our minds that Jesus simply came to say, never mind, don't worry about sin anymore. You're all good. So do you uh, do whatever you want and grace will totally cover like whatever. Notice they, they, they accuse us of that, but that's not what Christians preach. 
But if you know at what we or uh, what he really, what he's really, uh, what he really said in his words and life and paraphrase, I have come to give you a new way, a perfect way. Leave your old self behind and find who you were made to be in me, in Jesus, not in nationality, not in no law. Not in you black and black, 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 or not in you white and white, 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 or whatever you want to throw in there. No, in Jesus, in me. And yes, I know that you're not perfect and will fail. That's why I died for you. So that anytime you cannot do it, it's on me. But you still have to try and work every day at forsaking your flesh, forsaking your flesh and the destructive things that you have allowed to rule you and move towards me and the beautiful living kingdom I have come to establish. Let me get another paragraph. When we get and when we get it and grasp this and hear what Jesus was truly saying, it is, it is when we actually realize the depth of his love and the meaning of his sacrifice. When our, when our darkness is in, in confronted uh, by his light, we can no longer live in the shadows, cheapening his beautiful creation of grace. He gave us out of love. And you know what? Let me say this before I read this next passage. When you look at these cults, especially Hebrew roots, I mean, all of them probably on equal level with this, but especially because we deal with the Hebrew Israelite doctrine and debunking them, they cheapen God's grace. Being that their movement and their so-called theology or doctrine is cheap anyway. Right. It's a cheap knockoff by three little, you know, three men, you know, in a warehouse, probably halfway drunk anyway. Uh, it's a cheap knockoff. It's not no real sal salvation. If you look at their, their 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 explanation of salvation, it's cheap. If you look at their so-called explanation of 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 God's grace, it's cheap. It's no substance under it. Right. While they're saying, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law, cheap, right? It's, it's sad, but let's keep going. When Jesus kneeled down to a woman he had just saved from stoning for being caught in the act of adultery, first he told her that he had give, forgiven her sin and no one could accuse her, but then tells her something else, go and sin no more. Isn't that how Jesus deals with us, uh, us though? He kneels down and loves and gentleness next to us, gentleness, gent gentleness, sorry, next to us as we lay in the ruins of our mistake. Then he forgives us in extending his beautiful and amazing grace. So often we think this is where the story ends. This is, this is all that needs uh, needs not know where the story ends. So nowhere does the story end at that point. Jesus then helps the woman uh, up and says, go and sin no more. What? Did you see that? Jesus doesn't just, uh, just leave us there on the ground with forgiveness only. Instead, though, he strengthens. I love that part. I love, he strengthens and he lifts us up to our feet and gives us a command first to go to do something to make an action and begin to change, then to sin no more, to leave the old behind and to stop the things that brought us to the ground in the first place. Oh God, Jesus doesn't just forgives us. He does one better. He sets us on a new path and invites us to leave behind our dark, uh, dark and begin to walk into his light. So, we see that grace isn't the allowance of our sin and acceptance of staying on the ground, but instead it is the empowerment to even though, uh, even through our mistakes, continuing walking on towards the kingdom Jesus has invited us. That's powerful right there. Now, counterfeit grace, I believe, it's the opposite of that. Counterfeit grace don't pick you up. 
Counterfeit grace, basically what you see what the Hebrew Israelites, you Israel, there go your grace, do whatever you want, right? And scream the law, scream the law, and Yahweh wish and all that other garbage, right? Notice with them, Pastor Sean and Brother Brian, all the crazy stuff that we have seen, they go behind and they justify their sinful ways. So there was no real true change. There was no, there's no accountability. There's no real responsibility. There is no Christ in what they doing at all. There's no grace. They thump on the law that calls for what? Their death, right? And again, I would say to Hebrew Israelites, hey, you under the law? Hey, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law. Well, at the same time, what you're telling everybody in the rest of the world is that, listen, you're lawless anyway. You're a whoremonger, you're profane. You're ungodly, you're unthankful, you're, you're, you're all those things that what you, you're seeing, you, you, you're just operating in sin. When you say that you're putting yourself back under the 613 laws, you're the type of person that need that law because you're lawless. But again, in 1 Timothy chapter uh, 1, verse 8, it says that the law is not for the righteous man. So you're letting the world know also that you are unrighteous anyway. Brother Brian, Pastor Sean, is this making sense? Because it's making a lot of sense to me. And this counterfeit grace that you're pushing, it has no substance. It don't save not, no one, including you. This is why you keep running to the law, to law, 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 law. Because you know what? I believe Pastor Sean and Brother Brian even with them harping on the 613 law, what they doing behind them closed doors? Are they keeping the law then? I don't think so. See, again, here's another They're doing tip anything and acting they want. You, you saw they was at the strip club last year. They yes, slide down the road. They was getting it in. You know, dropping it like it hot. Baby. Mm. Sliding down the road. And listen, this is what Jesus, listen, we talked about Matthew. It was slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding. Sliding That's down the road. Listen, th listen, we talked about Matthew chapter 23, what Jesus said, that these people are hypocrites. And remember, we looked at the word hypocrite, Brother Brian and Pastor Sean. Y'all wasn't here. Maybe y'all were watching, but y'all wasn't here up on the panel with me. We looked at the word hypocrite. What did it say, fam? The hypocrite means actors, pretenders, not real, right? Playing the role. This yep. is what you see from these people, uh, Brother Brian. They play in the role. There's no real substance there, and they don't got no grace. Come on, Brother Brian. What's well, the word, the word itself, if you trace the word back, it traced back to, you know, the little smiley face and the sad face and the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the like, mask. Basically, they uh -huh. don't act. They put on an acting face and they act the part of righteousness. And uh -oh. that's what most cults do. They just put on an act. They really know that they're what they're doing ain't going to save them, but they're doing it because they're putting on an act and putting on a show. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know what, Brother Brian, that makes a lot of sense. Because you know what? Notice all of these occults, every last one of them, Pastor Sean and Brother Brian, they all got a script. 